What's up guys and welcome back to see you out there. It's a nasty day here in Texas. It's rainy and we can't go on the water. So we're going to do another instructional video today and we're going to talk about the three best ways to rig your soft plastic to redfish. Three best ways and when to use them. Let's get into it now. Alright guys, what's going on and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about plastics, plastics specifically for redfish. Uh, a lot of these techniques will carry over into trout and flounder as a bycatch, but we're going to talk about these specifically for redfish. So we're going to talk about the three best ways to rig your plastics when fishing for redfish and when those techniques apply. <clears throat> All right guys, the first technique we're going to talk about and the most common way to rig soft plastics, I've got a 3JD twist lock jig head and an eighth ounce size with a 3 aught hook and I've got a three and a half inch hooked up baits pearl and chartreuse paddle tail. The most common way to hook a soft plastic is on a jig head. Now the size of the jig head is going to greatly depend on water depth and what you're trying to accomplish. If you're fishing on the flats and you're fishing in one to three foot of water, 16th ounce and eighth ounce is really all you need because you don't want this fish to sink through the strike zone so fast that the fish doesn't have an opportunity to see it. But you don't want it so light that it never makes it to the bottom. With redfish having that mouth slung underneath them, a lot of times they're looking along the bottom, they're looking along the grass, they're looking along oyster shells and rocks for crustaceans and small fish. So if you keep your lure up high in the water column too often by using too light of a weight, you're never going to get them to bite it because they're never going to find the lure. A lot of times they'll fall down here in Texas coast with a lot of mud and that lure will fall into that mud and it'll puff. And when it puffs, that'll trigger a redfish to attack. The same thing in rocks and shells. I find a lot of times when I'm throwing a jig head, it'll get hung up in oyster shell and I'll free it. You know, you snap the line, you pop the line and it'll free up. And when it comes shooting out of those oyster shells, you'd be amazed at how many times a redfish has attacked it when it comes out of there. They hear that clicking, they hear it hung up, they come in to investigate. To them, it sounds like a crustacean feeding on the oysters. That lure frees up out of those oyster shells. Bam, the hooked up baits is gone and you're hooked up, you're on. All right guys, so how do you rig a twist lock jig head onto a hooked up baits three and a half inch soft plastic? It's very easy. The way you want this lure to face or to swim is with this tail facing down and you want the hook coming out of the top of it. So that swims naturally and the tail can do its work coming through the water. So the way to do this is to take your jig head, doesn't matter if it's a 3 odd, a 4 odd, a 5 odd hook size, doesn't matter if it's a full ounce or if it's a quarter ounce, and lay it up there the way it's going to sit and see where your jig head hook is going to come out. Once you figure that out, you want to insert this dead center. A lot of these soft plastics will have a seam where they were poured and you can follow that seam right down the middle. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the seam. Stay dead center, find that seam on the top where it was poured and come out there and then push it up to the screw. Once it's pushed up, it's not like a normal jig head where you can push this up over the keepers. You're going to have to thread this. Righty tighty lefty loosey, no different. Thread it. Continue to thread it up on that jig head. And these twist locks that are made by 3JD lures will keep that lure in position no matter what. You'll lose this part all the way down before you ever lose your part that's up on the jig head. That's how you rig one on a twist slot jig head, an eighth ounce 3JD jig head. That's how you hook that plastic up on there. Now let's discuss when you want to use this and how you want to use this. All right guys, now that we've got our lure on our jig head, let's discuss how to use this 
and when to use this. The how to use this is very simple. The cadence and retrieve that you feel most comfortable with is the right way to use it. There's no particular cadence, bump, bump, reel, bump, bump, reel, reel, bump, reel, bump. There's no right way. Way the fish are feeding, where you're confident and what's working that time and day is the right way to work this lure. I have a cadence that I like, everyone has a cadence they like, so find yours and stick to it and be confident in it and you'll find that you'll catch more fish. When you want to use this lure, this is my go-to way of rigging. This is my 80% of the time and I use this as a search bait. I like to use a paddle tail, particularly these hooked up baits, as a search bait because not only am I getting movement, am I getting flash, but I'm also getting vibration coming off of this tail. And that vibration can trigger fish, their lateral line senses it, and then they'll, they'll pick up on the lure. So I use soft plastics as a search bait and I tend to move them a little bit faster than you probably should and faster than most people will. What I'll do is I'll find a shoreline or a marsh, a rock, a jetty, a rock wall, uh, a gut we call here in Texas, which is a deeper area, a drain from the marsh. It's a little deeper than a strain area. We call that a gut or a ditch. And I'll throw this in there and then I'll start retrieving it. Bounce, bounce, let it sink. Bounce, bounce, let it sink. Bounce, bounce, let it sink. And I'll continue with that cadence until I either get a fish or I say that this area is no good and I'm moving. I'm eliminating this water. I'm now moving to a new spot. I find that that cadence works good for me. A way to put this into perspective is imagine throwing an eighth ounce jig head. Imagine that your lure is sinking one foot per second. Is that the exact science? No, but that in my head works. And if I'm fishing five foot of water and I give it a bump bump and then I let it sink, well, I make sure I wait five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. I know I'm down to the bottom. If the fish are sitting on the bottom and I don't give it that five seconds, well, I may stay at two feet of water the entire time I'm retrieving it. And I'm above the redfish or I'm above the flounder or I'm above the trout. We just talked about how redfish tend to stay down towards the bottom and feeding and browsing around on the bottom structure looking for food. So make sure that you give that lure time to get to the bottom. The jig head's the best way to do it, but you have to let the jig head do its work. So again, we're gonna throw the lure, we're gonna let it sink. Five foot of water, I'm gonna wait five seconds before I start my retrieve. Two foot of water, I'm gonna wait two seconds before I start my retrieve. And then I'm gonna start my cadence. Bump, 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 let it sink, let it settle. One, two, three, four, five. All right, bump, 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 let it sink. And continue to vary your retrieve speed and continue to vary your action until you get a bite. And once you find an action, a speed that's working, stick with that the rest of the day and you should not have any problems identifying and locating fish. Just remember the main thing with your return cadence is confidence. If a steady retrieve for you with an intermittent bump works, that's fine, as long as the lure's staying close to the bottom. If a couple bumps and a couple seconds wait, one bump, whatever is working for you, develop the confidence in that retrieve cadence and let this jig head and lure do the work for you. Uh, that's about it for how to rig a jig head and about when to use a jig head. Let's move on to the next one. All right guys, the second way we're gonna talk about rigging your soft plastic is with a shank weighted weedless hook. This particular one is a 16th ounce, three aught shank weighted hook by owner. And our lure is a five inch 3JD game changer. This is Corey's favorite trout lure. This thing's a beast. What we're gonna talk about is how to rig this shank weighted and weedless and when to rig it that way. All right guys, so here we go. We're gonna show you how to rig a soft plastic on a shank weighted twist lock weedless hook and then we're gonna talk about when to use it and how. So basically what you do is you take your plastic, same thing we did before you find your center line. 3JD, this particular brand of lure, their motto is rig it tail up. So to look at this lure, you would think that you would rig it this way and the hook would be slung here and this would be how our weedless hook looked. Well, these guys want you to do it opposite. So I apologize if anyone thinks I'm doing this upside down. This is how these guys design their lures and I'm telling you that tail, work, tail works facing up like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we did earlier. We're going to find dead center and we're going to poke this little push pin in and we're going to twist it just like we did on that 
three JD twist head. We're going to twist it all the way up, nice and snug. And then we're going to do the exact same thing we did earlier. We're going to find where it's going to come through and we're going to work it through there. So if you just come straight through here, your lure is not going to sit right. So what you got to do is push your lure up a little bit so that it sits flat. Once the hook is all the way through, we want it to sit just like this with the hook all the way through it and the hook on top of the plastic. So when a fish bites down, he compresses the lure and finds the barb. So you have to push the lure up a little bit. Push the lure up. Dead center is always very, very, very important. If it's not dead center, then your lure is going to swim crooked. It's going to kind of flutter in a weird direction. A little trick you can do is now you see that we're rigged and we're rigged flat and good. What you can do is take your soft plastic, pull it forward, and then bury just the point of that hook in there. So now the very tip is perfectly smooth and we're not going to catch any grass, we're not going to catch any shell, we're not going to catch anything. We are 100% weedless and ready to go. So now let's talk about how to use this and when to use it. All right guys, we're rigged up weedless. We're ready to rock and roll with our twist lock shank weighted owner hook. So now how to use this? This is exactly the same as using a jig head. The only difference is Typically, we're throwing this a little bit lighter weight and we're throwing this in heavier cover. The reason we throw this is to keep it from getting hung up. This is my go-to sight fishing rig. And the reason I like throwing this sight fishing is typically when you're sight fishing, you're throwing into a heavy cover. You're throwing into shell, you're throwing into rock, you're throwing into grass, uh, you're throwing into heavy marsh reeds. And throwing a typical jig head that you would normally search bait in open water with creates an issue because if the fish are tight to cover and you throw up to that marsh grass, the reeds, or in that heavy grass flats in Florida, that jig head is going to have a tendency to grab hold of that. So you make that perfect shot, that perfect cast in front of that school of redfish, then you bounce it twice, and then crap, I hung a reed or I hooked a piece of turtle grass, or I hung onto a shell, and now I've spooked that school of fish because now I've got to break that thing loose and get it back to the boat to present it again. This style of rigging, this way of rigging, eliminates that from happening. This is a very, very, very effective way of fishing, and the only reason I don't fish this way 100% of the time is because a jig head is just so easy. What will happen here is you will tear the plastic the plastic will get, it'll get kind of discombobulated on the hook and you will have to fix it every couple casts. Every few casts you'll have to fix it, pull a little point back over and it gets frustrating if you're just searching. If you're just blind casting and you're working an area, it becomes a little bit too much. You spend more time fixing your lure than you do working. So for an all day technique, not my favorite. For sight fishing when you're not making a lot of random casts, when you're throwing directly to a swirl, directly to a push, directly to a fish that was back out of the water and you see him or a school is coming down the shoreline and there's birds working, that's when this is the one. Everything is set up perfect, everything is weedless, our barb is hidden and we make that cast out in front of that school of fish and we let it sit and we wait. And when that school of fish gets in a range, we give it a couple bounces, two bounces, three bounces, settle it back down and that's when the redfish will grab this thing and work it. It's a very, very easy technique. Can you search bait with this? Can you throw this and do the technique we just talked about with the jig head? Absolutely, not saying you can. My personal opinion, I find that I spend more time fixing the lure on the shank weighted hook than I do actually working the lure. So for me, when to throw this is heavy cover or sight fishing. Oyster bars, rocks, reeds, turtle grass, wherever you're at, there's potential for that exposed hook to grab something and mess up your cast. Give this a try. Another cool feature about the shank weighted hook is where the weight's at. You'll notice the weight is not at the head, so the lure doesn't fall head first in that three to five foot of water like we we're talking about. You get a very, very flat, even fall. Flat, even fall is really interesting because what you'll notice, you're fishing for redfish and you start catching trout. Trout, a lot of times, will catch it on the fall. So this, this way of rigging it can increase your trout hookups in deeper water because it falls slower and it falls flatter. We're fishing for redfish, so we're not worried about trout. That's another video altogether. But anyway, it, you get a flatter fall. 
You get a flat or slower fall, it allows the lure, it allows the tail to do its thing while it's sinking, and then it has more of a flutter to it. Um, this is a great, great, great way to sight fish reds. If you wanted to get into sight fishing and you want to throw plastics at them, invest in some of these. This particular brand is Owner. It's a 3 aught hook. It's a 16th ounce twist lock shank weighted weedless hook. I know it's a mouthful. I know it's a lot. I'm telling you, if you figure out how to rig these, how to bury that bar, remember just to pull that plastic a little bit forward, bury just that bar bin, and when that fish bites it, he's going to compress that plastic and he's going to find that hook. No issues. You got him every time. Anyway, guys, this is my second favorite way to rig soft plastics, the shank weighted twist lock weedless hook. All right, guys, here's our third and final way that I like to rig soft plastics for redfish. We're talking about just rigging soft plastics, so we're not talking about popping corks a day. We're just talking about rigging plastics directly. Here's our third and final way. It's a very interesting way, and it's not used enough in salt water. Let's get into it. All right, guys, let's talk about rigging this third and final way. This is a weightless worm hook. This is a bass fishing go-to staple. Typically, you'll see this Texas rig with a bullet weight above it, the plastic hook to it, but this thing works money. So what we've got here is a fluke style zoom three and a half inch bait. The way we're gonna rig this is you'll notice this thing has a little, a little bend in the shank. And what that's designed to do is to sit inside this lure, expose the eye, and then give us a streamline of appearance. So we're gonna thread this in a way that the eye is poked out the center of the front, and then it's gonna be weedless, just like the other way we just showed. You'll notice this bait has a small little crease on top. That crease is exactly designed to hide that barb. So the way we're gonna rig this is the exact same way we rig the other one. We're gonna find the center, but this time, we're not gonna come all the way out the end because we have this little shank we have to worry about. We're gonna come in just to the point, just where the bend stops here. Once we're in there straight, we're gonna turn it and come right out the bottom. Dead center, right on the crease of the lure is where we're gonna come out at. And then we're gonna thread this lure nice and careful all the way in there. And then what we'll do is we'll pull this little hook. And what you'll notice is, look at this. Now we've got the tip out and we've got our little crease out here and now we're ready to rig this thing weedless. So now we're gonna come down here to the very bottom. We're gonna pull it forward just like we did on the other lure. That way it sits nice and straight once it's rigged up. We're gonna pull it forward. We're gonna get dead center of the bottom, come out dead center of the top. And then look at that, it's gonna sit perfect. That little hook and barb is gonna ride right in that little recess and allow this lure to be completely weedless. Same thing, pull it forward just a little bit and just take the tip of that barb and hide it in the plastic. And that thing is rigged 100% weedless. It's weightless, but it's weedless. So now let's talk about the when and the how. All right guys, so now we've got our Zoom Fluke rigged weedless, 100% weedless just like the last option. The difference is we've got that little double 90 in there in this lure that hides that shank and keeps it protected. And this thing here is smooth, flat, and erratic. You want to see a lure move erratic? Rig it this way and throw it under brush. Skip it underneath a dock and let it sink lightly and bump it. You will be amazed at how much action you can throw on a lure with zero weight. So number one problem you're thinking right now, how am I going to throw this thing with no weight? That is an issue. I throw spinning tackle. I throw very light braid. I can send these far enough. I can't throw it a hundred yards. But if I'm working a bank with heavy, let's say mangroves, if you're working heavy mangroves and you want to pitch back underneath them, this is a very, very, very fun way. It's a foot to two feet back underneath the mangroves. Skip this thing back underneath there and it's going to fall very slowly but the retrieve is what is fun. You don't want to do your standard bump, bump, let it sink because the sink's not going to happen as much. You're looking for erratic movement. You're looking for side rod tip, a couple good hard snaps and let it settle. And you'll notice that you get a very dead fish move out of this. You'll get an erratic jump and then you'll get a very erratic 
kind of a pause and a fall, and it'll just kind of sink based on the hook of the weight of the hook. It's a very erratic style to fish redfish. It's a very fun way to fish them. Skip it underneath wherever you're at. If you're in extremely heavy cover and you don't need that weight because you're in six inches of water and the redfish are belly crawling, you don't need a 16th ounce weight. You don't need an eighth ounce weight. You don't need it to sink. You just need it to get in front of them and be weedless. This is a great, great technique. A lot of times here on the Texas coast, our redfish will get up in the weeds and they'll belly crawl and you can see their eyeballs are so skinny. In that technique, if you're or in that situation, if you throw a weighted jig head to them, the chances are you're going to spook them when it hits the water. This is going to hit the water nice and quiet, very delicate, and then you just bump it in front of them. You can rig any of the soft plastics we've talked today this way. You can rig any of the soft plastics we've talked about today anyway, but this technique if I'm throwing this way, these zoom flukes are ridiculous how much action they impart in that very fluttery, very erratic, dying bait fish style that they look at. I don't throw this as much. This is something I always have in my tackle bag. And the reason I have this is when we're on the yellowfin pulling skiff and we're back in the mud and we see those fish as shallow as they can get, I'll put one of these on for Corey and I'll rig one on for myself because I don't want to spook them with that weighted cast. I don't want that splash when it hits the water. I want to throw this right out in front of them, right in front of their heads and give it a couple jerks and get that erratic movement and then before it hits the bottom, you can guarantee this thing is gone. So this is the third and final way I like to rig soft plastics for redfish and this is the just weedless worm hook. I don't even know what you'd call that thing, but it's just a weedless worm hook, no weights on a zoom fluke or on my hooked up baits three inch uh, paddle tail. Guys, this is a very, very fun technique for any style of fishing. Give this a try, add this to your repertoire. It's not every day, it's not all day, but I guarantee you when you learn to throw them like this, you'll add this to your, to your arsenal and you'll use it more than you think. This is a very fun style of fishing. It's weedless, you're not gonna get hung up in anything. It skips very well if you're good at skipping lures to redfish underneath heavy cover, underneath brush piles underneath mangroves, back in the reeds, and they're way back in there, you know, six, eight feet back off the shore in the heavy weeds, and you can't get a weighted lure to them, skip one of these back to them, and they'll eat it. I guarantee they'll eat it. It's a very effective way. And this is our third way we like to rig soft plastics for redfish. All right, guys, there you have it. Our three favorite ways to rig soft plastics for redfish. Keep in mind, guys, I'm not an expert. I do love to fish, and I do love to throw soft plastics. I thought you guys might like to hear our opinion on it. That's the jig head, twist lock jig head by 3JD. Shank weighted twist lock. And then straight up old bass, weightless, weedless rig. Guys, these are a lot of fun ways. If you learn to throw these three ways for redfish, I guarantee you'll increase your hookups. Uh, it's very simple. It's very fun. It just takes confidence, guys. Just remember, if you're trying to figure out how to throw plastics and you're trying to learn how to catch fish, and you're searching the internet to figure out what to do, the best thing to do is just get out there and fish. Put something on you like, put it on the way you like to throw it, and work it the way you like to move it, and just keep grinding. Eliminate water, you'll find fish, you'll start catching fish, and you'll find your favorite way, and then you'll learn when to use all three. They all work. All lures catch fish. They catch fishermen better than they catch fish most times. Um, just remember, a lot of the problem with plastics is not being in the right place at the right time. So if a fish isn't there and you're not catching anything, a lot of times that doesn't mean that you rigged your plastic wrong or you got the wrong color or you got the wrong style or you got the wrong brand or the wrong flavor. It just means you're in the wrong place. Eliminate water, continue to move until you find the fish and then remember why they were there and what you found when you were there and repeat that the next day. And you'll increase your hookups. It's a great way to catch fish, guys. Any one of these three ways will do you proud. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this helps someone out there. If there's some way you like to rig them better, something that I didn't discuss, drop it down in the comments below. If you enjoy these instructional videos, ask for some more. Tell me what you want. What do you want to see that you think I might be able to help you with? And I would be proud and honored to provide you guys with my opinion on it. Again, thank you for all your views. Thank you for all the positivity. We appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, we hope you guys have a good summer and we'll see you out there.